Well, hello to my YouTube subscribers, YouTube viewers, and my new YouTube new subscribers, and my Twitter followers. Oh, what a sunny day we got today here in West Texas here. We got people out and about running around. San Angelo's slowly opening up to small businesses, letting things open up a bit. It's already 82 degrees out there, so, but it's still not safe. There's no virus, you know, we have no vaccine for this Chinese virus, and uh, San Angelo actually did do a post yesterday saying they closed camping at the, uh, Lake Nasworthy, that's the lake next to where I'm at, so you can't go camping at the lake. Good news for me is they haven't made the RV parks close, but uh, there shouldn't be a need for that because uh, this RV park I'm at, the people are doing pretty good, as you can see through my webcam here. This is my webcam I have aiming out at my chicken coop and uh, we, we're getting some traffic going to the lake but I'm saying San Angelo's closed the lake area they, they saw it anyway but I did a little drive by yesterday I had to go to straps and grab some cokes and uh, some propane for my grill um, but I didn't see the the little park areas were barricaded off and stuff. So who knows? Crazy times, crazy times. I've been watching some people's videos about the second wave of the virus will be coming. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a pretty good second wave of the virus if everybody's out and about. And uh, businesses are opening up, but unfortunately, we got to open up the businesses. Uh, people need to work. People need money to pay for their bills and pay for food and whatever they need. I think uh, the craziest thing you could do is if your state is locked down, you can't move out of your city or whatever and when they finally open up is you pack up your shit and you move somewhere else uh, that would be probably the stupidest thing you could do um, the best thing you could be doing is buying food um, let's see if you pack up your shit and move somewhere you're gonna get the virus on the road you know, every time you go to the gas station, fill up. Uh, you got a good chance of catching the virus from somebody else using the gas pumps or when you went in to pay. Um, then you, you don't have a, you know, kind of tough. You probably don't have a job already, but at least when you, the states open up, uh, and your businesses start coming back uh, you will have a job but if you pack up your shit and start moving around want to be a nomad that would be the worst mistake you could probably do um, the best thing you could probably do I would just stay stay put you know yes I'm in a travel trailer I could hook up my truck and put somewhere else but why the virus is everywhere um, I'm in a good location but still San Angelo has cases we were getting new cases every day of the virus uh, we're not getting a firestorm of cases every day but still there are cases you figure if we're getting a case a day or three or four a day that means there's probably 30 or 50 people out there spreading the virus not knowing they got the virus 
but they're feeling good. That's what this virus does. I call this virus a cockroach virus uh, spray. Um, it's a delayed kill. It's designed to let the cockroach go back to its home and give it to its babies and its uh, mate and family. And then, boom, it kills you. So it's like a ticking time bomb. Gives you about a week to live, two weeks. Or you might be, I don't know if it's lucky. I wouldn't want to be a, uh, a survivor that's spreading it. You know, you won't get sick. It'd be kind of like getting typhoid. Uh, when the typhoid shit hit America, people were dying left and right. Um, there were people that were carriers. They were fine. And what happens with typhoid is if you were like a cook or something and you cooked meals for people, it would kill those people that you fed and cooked for. And that's why there's a... You can look up typho, Typhoid Mary on YouTube and it'll tell you the story of that lady. She was a carrier. She would get jobs for people at homes to be their personal cook. And next thing you know, that family would die. She would move on to the next family saying, Yes, I know how to cook very well. And indeed, she probably did. But unfortunately, she was a carrier. And unfortunately, with this Chinese virus, you have the option you could probably be a carrier too. Um, and you don't have to cook for anybody. All you gotta do is just be around and sneeze and cough on somebody and boom, they got it. And they're gonna go home to their families and boom, they got it. And so it's a, it's a big circle. So you do have to wear your mask and have some kind of good safety glasses because you don't want a big old loogie going in your eye if somebody sneezes or coughs next to you and doesn't cover their mouth or something or didn't have a mask. Uh, then you'd be going, oh, fuck, I'm dying. So, no, I was watching one video, though. Some guy sitting in the middle of the woods is saying, you know, this will be your time to move out go out in the woods and get away from that shit um it's a tough deal even if I was stuck in a little apartment or something uh at least you got city services there that will try to help but you go out in the woods and try to be a Mr. Camper <laughs> You don't have electricity, you don't, you might have a generator, but you, you gotta get gas. Uh, there's all, all, you can only have so much gas to run your generator. Um, you know, you might have a gun and shoot some deers, but that's kind of illegal. Um, but no, I don't think you could run away from this shit. You're gonna have to get the end up getting the virus or later hopefully by the time you get it they might have some kind of uh, virus uh, cure or a vaccine to have so it won't hurt you as bad but uh, uh it's scary folks all I could say is good luck but yes I would stay where you're at and fortify your home and hopefully product supplies will be more available if you don't go f panic shopping and buy up a bunch of shit paper and I think toilet paper is probably the worst thing you could pile up with uh, we got running water the worst you could do is use your shower as a bidet you take a poop so you usually take a poop early in the morning then jump in the shower and clean yourself off there you go, you don't have to, to buy all that toilet paper. But some people are like, oh, that's sickening. Well, yeah, but 
if you hoard the toilet paper, you're going to have to do that anyway. So what the hell? Why waste your money on toilet paper? I would waste my money on things you need. Things that you absolutely can't live without. I would buy medicine. I would buy um, food supplies. Uh, non-perishable stuff. Um, t too perishable, but you don't want to get, you know, things you got to go run to the store every three or four days because you, you used it up. But when it's perishable, that's probably what you're going to have to do. So then you're fighting getting next to people at the store or being out to catch the stuff. So, But yeah, you need food. You need a job. So yeah, when you're at work, you don't hit up on the girls at the drinking fountain or whatever you do your job and hopefully it's not going to be a close contact job and if you're stuck in a cubicle that's cool you don't have to lift your head up to see what's going on just hunker down get on that computer and type away and spray away get you some hand cleanser or some Lysol spray and just spray every five minutes so when somebody walks by you just psh, psh, hit that old Lysol spray and carry on Meanwhile, you got income coming. You're able to stay at your house. You're able to keep your apartment. So, uh, sooner or later, you're doing good. But the first thing I'd do when I got home was uh, hopefully you have a laundry machine. You have a washer and dryer at the house. Uh, if not, I would get you some kind of a... UV, you know, if you have a tannin bed, you got it made. I'd throw all my my clothes I went to work with on the tannin bed and turn on the tannin bed for about five ten minutes and let the UVs eat my virus off that damn clothes. And then you could probably uh, safely handle your clothes to wash them. So yeah, that's my biggest thing is I don't have a laundromat I have to use a laundromat I don't have a washer and dryer being a full time RVer um, some rigs are nice some rigs do have a washer and dryer stack in their rig and that would be awesome but I don't have that in my rig don't have the room for it and I don't want to buy a stackable washer and dryer type deal and have it outside there's too many things. There's mud daubers and bugs that get into it. It'll just be a waste of money. So I do have to deal with a, a laundromat trip once in a while. So, so that would kind of suck for me. But other than that, um, I would uh, just keep on doing like you would be locked down I wouldn't be socializing if it it would be hard once school started up you know kids are the biggest spreader of every kind of disease you know when you're a kid you're fighting mumps chicken pox um, colds whatever you know kids are just little bug carriers they, they love to touch whatever there is they're like oh what's that I don't know let's poke at it pick it up try it <laughs> so oh, that's poop I didn't like that one but yep so yeah it's gonna be tough it'll be a you know, I, I'm saying it's gonna be an exciting time to live and if you live through it you'll have a hell of a good story to talk about but, uh, yeah, the next following months, it's going to get tough, people. Um, and like I said, if you're in a big city, you're lucky because you've got food bank people who are trying to give you free food. Um, out here in West Texas, out in the boonies here, uh, we don't have a lot of food banker people. Uh, we've been pretty lucky so far. 
I won't say it won't happen. You never know. I've been real, been real surprised. Uh, I thought for sure fire, uh, San Angelo would go underneath the firestorm. We have like 150,000 people in San Angelo. And the people out here love to socialize. They love to go out and do things. Uh, shop and go to parks, go fishing, go boating, and hang out together and have a good time. And we have a college out here. We got the military out here. So uh, our uh, caseload is up to about 85 people, I do believe, got the virus. <clears throat> So, I was real shocked at those numbers. I don't know if that's real or not. And who knows? Uh, we might have a lot of people stay sick. They figure, oh, I just got the flu. I got, I might, I just feel bad. So, I'll stay at home. And then finally, they wait till they're like totally almost dead. Then they call it ambulances come get them and it's like well shit you had the virus for about four weeks <laughs> now you're now you're gonna have to be on a ventilator and uh, see if you make it or not uh, meanwhile you four weeks of spreading the shit around so they're oh crap so yeah people be safe out there don't be stupid still be your distance will save your life if you want to hold hands and hug and kiss and all that fun stuff i call this the stupid killer virus uh it's killing those people pretty quick uh, we could kiss and hug later all right well thanks for watching everybody have a fun day it's, it's gonna be a nice warm day here and uh, as you can see we got some joggers and walkers back in there heading towards the lake um, we'll see what happens like I said uh, I did read that San Angelo closed the parks in the lake here from uh, May 7th till the May 31st but on Sam people out here walking down the road to the lake driving on the on the road pretty frequently so I didn't know what's going on but uh, they're not following the San Angelo's uh, closure thing all right well Hopefully we'll talk to you sooner or later. I'll need to get out there and do an outdoor video pretty soon. But like I said, it's pretty dead out here. There's nothing much going on. Uh, the RV park people are pretty much going to work, coming home, staying inside, or they'll be outside the rig. And that is okay because our spaces are pretty spacey. We uh, have a good uh, 30 or 40 feet in between the next rig, so it's not that bad. Um, I've seen other uh, RV parks where you're just parked next to one rig. It's kind of like staying at walmart's parking lot you got a car next to you and on the other side you got a car next to you and they're bumping doors that would be a crappy rv park to stay at um, that's too close it comes handy when you want to open up your window and hand hand your neighbor a coffee or a breakfast or something they can undo their window and you can swap lunches or breakfasts that way but other than that, I wouldn't want to stay there for too long because that is too close. Um, but other than that, just hanging out, watching YouTube movies and things like that. And uh, doing some sub for subbing. Trying to get my sub count going. So we're getting it. We got some new subscribers today and... Uh, I'll be doing a shout out to my new subscribers. I haven't seen any new people show up on my sub page yet. But we'll do another shout out. 
probably in about 10-15 minutes we'll do a, a shout out video to all my great subscribers that gave me a sub and when they land on my sub page I give them a sub back for letting me go up the ladder so I pull them up the ladder but unfortunately I do get people that like to unsub and that's okay like it unsub but I know who subbed to me so I could find that person and unsub them and that's fair if you throw me in the dirt I'll throw you in the dirt with me you let me climb the ladder I'm going to take you up the ladder one step too so that's how I work my channel folks if you want to give me extra support by commenting on my videos that's awesome that's where I make money. I don't make money on subs. But unfortunately, I don't have a thousand subs yet. Um, so I'm not making nothing on my channel. I'm just uh, trying to get my channel back to where my old channel was. So I can start making some pennies a day. So, meanwhile, take care everybody. Thanks for watching and stay put. Like I said, the very worst thing you could do is... Pack up your shit. Think you want to get a travel trailer? <laughs> and uh, do what I'm doing. Um, this is full-time RV. And you can watch all these full-time RV videos and thinking, Oh, that's going to be so awesome. Why am I going to pay for this big old house? The kids are grown. Let's sell everything and buy us a travel trailer or a big RV. And hit the road ah, no um, it takes a special person to do what I'm doing there's a lot of special people out there who could do it a lot of special people will do it for about a year or two and say you know this kind of sucks I think we'll just stick to maybe vacation times or getaways I do recommend you getting you a, a little travel trailer they are sweet and they are it's like home away from home but when you're on the road that's where your adventure starts because all sorts of shit hits the fan when you're on the road you can blow a tire you don't have a spare um, you don't have a jack your car breaks down then you're screwed you're like oh where are we gonna stay you know are we gonna leave the trailer on the side of the road no not for long the uh, state troopers the state troopers or the highway patrol whatever you have as uh, cops on the highway they'll tag your shit and have it towed to an impound lot somewhere and then you're screwed um, uh, you could stay at an RV park which that's what I prefer to do I wouldn't want to stay at Walmart Walmart was awesome but they're cracking down on RVers to stay overnight due to some cities like in Vegas if you go to Vegas and you want to stay at Walmart they won't let you the reason why it's not that RV or people are abusing Walmart which they are abusing Walmart in a lot of locations uh, but from the get-go in Vegas uh, they wouldn't Walmart wouldn't let you stay there because there's a bunch of RV parks across the road or saying hey uh, you're making me lose my fucking money man you need to get those fuckers out of your lot send them over here and Vegas is a shit town to, to have a RV over there because they rip you off they have like a RV tax when you first pull in and that's like 1200 bucks plus the rent for that month and that tax is like a one time deal or for at least six months they don't let you stay full year round there they make you stay they'll let you stay for six months and then they'll tell you you got to leave you got to leave for a day at least one day you got to pull out your spot and and then you come back the next day and guess what you got to pay that $1,200 RV tax and then pay your rent on top of that 
So, I don't know what's up with that tax. I think that's a fucking ripoff. Um, but, yeah, Vegas is not a good place to go. You know, unless you got the money. You know, if you're, if you're a high roller, you got your RV or a, a travel trailer and you want to go to Vegas and got some money and you want to stay maybe for the winter or something. Which is awesome. I spent two years in Vegas. Uh, the summers sucked like hell because it was hot as hell. Uh, it was oven heat, dry heat, and boy, it, you get out there and you just feel your skin start to crisp up. Um, but the winters were awesome. The winter times in Vegas is awesome. I did enjoy that. A um, little bit chilly at night, but the days weren't too bad. But it is a scum shithole town. You know, you go to a casino. You think you see a good looking woman, you want to say hi. Or vice versa, a good looking girl comes up to you and says hi. And you're like, oh, I got a score. Yeah, if you got about 50 or 60 bucks. <laughs> It'll be some damn prostitute. It's like, oh, fuck. Thanks, man. I thought I was gorgeous. <laughs> But, no, some dumb hooker wanting to make some money. But, what, can't blame them. That's what they're there for. But, that's Vegas for you, though. But, uh, I do enjoy where I'm at. Unfortunately, I lost my mom. My mom lives at the lake here, and, uh, I miss her. But I do have a couple of sisters that live out here, so that's not too bad at all. And, uh. San Angelo's not a bad town to be in. Everybody's pretty friendly. Um, can't complain. This RV park's not the best RV park to stay at. There's no, no not a lot of benefits for staying here other than you have uh, free water and a, and a free sewer hookup next to your rig so uh, uh, you don't have to pull your trailer somewhere to a dump station to drain your tanks every other day or so and just keep your valves shut until you start seeing your levels are too high and go outside and pull your levers and off you go drain your tanks real quick quick and easy um, this uh, RV offers cable TV but you gotta pay for it and internet is not free either. You gotta pay for that. Um, electricity depends on the rent that you're paying. They have a high rent rate and a lower rent uh, rate. The high rent they'll take care of your grass problems for you, and they'll pay for your electric. But I think they've cut the electric part to they'll pay a certain percentage of your electric. Which, uh, the electric has never been a big problem over here for me. My electric bill's been averaging probably about 80 bucks to maybe 100, 110 a month if, uh, I'm using my AC a lot or if I have my electric heaters going on too long. But, uh, other than that, I could afford the, that kind of electric bill. But I've chosen the lower rent, where the lower rent you take care of the grass, you take care of your electric, you take, yeah, well, that's about it. Um, if you want cable TV and internet, you got to call the cable company and set up appointment to have them come out and hook you up and then you got internet. Unless you are got a satellite system of your own. Then you're set up. You just set up your satellite and off you go. But um, that's just for TV. Uh, I haven't tried satellite internet. I would think that would probably suck. I'm not a big satellite fan anyway. Because if we have storms, you lose your satellite for 15-20 minutes. So you're... You're in the middle of the storm sitting there going, Ooh, this sucks. What's going on, world? I wish I knew what was going on. My TV's not working. So, but yeah. 
All right, people, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. And like I said, second wave's going to come around, and actually it might be even harder, especially if uh, the food source starts drying up a bit. It's getting a little scary. But the good news is we're still springtime. It's not too late to get you a little garden going. Unless you're stuck in an apartment. That would suck unless you got a little balcony. I would recommend you getting some uh, little planter boxes or something. You could still grow something. Lettuce or uh, tomatoes. Um, probably couldn't grow a bunch of corn. But who knows. Um, that's one thing I do like about this RV park. Uh, you can grow your little garden if you want. I have a couple of uh, raised beds that I put in. I need to get my butt out and start planting. Get all the weeds and grass out of my dirt. And give that to my chickens and off we go. Alright everybody, stay safe. We don't want anybody dying. Especially if you're a subscriber, then I lose a sub. That would suck. Alright, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Be safe.